Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is September 16th, 2022. I'm out of town. I'm dropping a kid off at college. And so, of course, I am somewhere right now in a hotel in San Diego thinking about and talking about the third fight. Canelo, one draw, one win against Golovkin, Triple G, several years older, right? Officially, one draw, one loss on my scorecard, two wins, right? So let's talk about the third fight, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, betting-wise, let's just get to it. Right? There's a bet on the board you have to take. If I told you Triple G and you're getting a plus 300 or higher, you need to take that bet, even if you don't think he's going to win the fight. Right? Triple G plus 360 the last time I saw it is a must, in my opinion, for your betting portfolio. Now let's talk about where we're going to get dodgy. It's going to be in addressing the idea that Canelo, who quite frankly is the more skilled fighter, in my opinion, right, wins the fight. How do we bet it? Now, let me just point out that the bet I'm going to propose here has blown up on me in recent fights. I thought the Anthony Joshua, Alexander Usyk rematch was not going to go the distance. I thought the Andy Ruiz, Luis Ortiz fight was not going to go the distance. At least in that fight, we got some knockdowns, right? But this fight, the third fight, especially when Canelo has in the interim fought bigger guys, physically bigger than Triple G. In other words, the first fight we were wondering, how is Canelo going to handle an aggressive middleweight? Well, Canelo has beaten a light heavyweight champion. Kovalev, a guy who gave Andre Ward all he could handle the first fight. Some would say more than Andre could handle in their first fight. Right, A guy who has already stopped Anthony Yard one of the brightest names at light heavyweight. Canelo has been in with him. Heavy puncher by 175 pound standards. Also, excellent jab, right? Better jab than Golovkin. And Canelo won that fight by stoppage. This fight's at 168. Understand, Canelo has already been in with Callum Smith. Had Callum Smith backing away from the pocket for 12 rounds. Callum Smith recently won a fight at 175. Right, so Canelo should be over the hump in terms of fearing Golovkin's power. Right, now I'll agree with that. Also, let's talk skill level. You know, we've seen fights, the Danny Jacobs fight that Canelo had, where Canelo showed you a head on a swivel. He showed you upper body on a swivel. Let's revisit the first fight. And I thought he lost this fight. Right? The first Golovkin fight. There's Canelo on his back foot some rounds. Canelo has a back foot. Canelo can actually bounce when he wants. Right, Canelo also, in some fights, will pace himself. Right, stamina used to be more of a concern for Canelo when he was younger. But Canelo will take a round off and he'll actually have his back touch the ropes. This is something you hardly ever see Golovkin do voluntarily. Right, so Canelo, make no mistake, I consider Canelo to be the more skilled fighter, right? Back foot, upper body movement, better defense. But Golovkin is impossible to train for. 
Golovkin is what I call a fastball pitcher, right? You know he's going to throw predominantly power shots with both hands. You know he's going to be standing relatively upright. You know he's going to be on the outer lip of the pocket. You know all this. And still, you can't quite block his shots when you get tired because his shots come in at a little bit of a loop, right? He throws them, it looks like it's straight, but then it's able to loop around your hand that you have up here, right? He starts to throw the punch and you think, okay, I'm prepared for a right hand, then hits you, suddenly you look up, the ref's counting. Or you see him, Marco Antonio Rubio, look at that fight. You see him and you bend your head. You understand that he's the guy who mows down guys. So you decide you're going to bend your head. And he hits you on the top of the head. And the punch is so devastating, it knocks you down. Folks, I think these two guys are tailor-made for each other. I believe there's bad blood. The second fight is a bit of a fluke. I can tell you, I watched the first few rounds of the second fight stunned. Canelo on his front foot against Golovkin. Right, totally different game plan than the I'm going to outbox him first fight. Second fight, Canelo was there to slug. Then you had something bizarre happen. You had Golovkin take a step back and actually start riddling Canelo with a jab. Right? I believe these guys know each other. I believe Golovkin believes he's unbeaten. I believe Golovkin believes Canelo has cut corners, used performance enhancers, interpret that however you want to get where he is. I think Canelo feels betrayed. This is one of the great fighters of our time. Right, folks, I, I don't even have to think about whether Canelo's a Hall of Famer. This is a guy who has jumped weight classes, whose idea of competing at 168 was fighting four champs, taking four titles, becoming undisputed. And an argument can be made he's a Hall of Famer before he even starts fighting at 168. I feel Canelo feels that the sport has not given him sufficient credit. What I want people to do is to research Canelo's past. You're gonna find some unreported fights, wins by Canelo. An argument can be made, Canelo's record is better than his official record, right? And I feel Canelo feels, look, here I am, I fought this guy, what more does he want? That second fight, I'm right in front of him, hunting him, telling him, all right, I'm here. You think you can come get it? Come get it. I'm right here. I fought this man, and he's going to start to put out rumors that I'm a dirty fighter? Right now, understand, we know there was the tainted meat in Canelo's past. Clint Buterall. Right? I'll be blunt. I hear clenbuterol and I just have my doubts. Right? I say, wow, but clenbuterol is really a weight cutter. Right? That's not the kind of drug that you take to really boost your epitestosterone. You know what? In the comments section of this video, I know over the years, I've noticed some of the people are weightlifters our bodybuilders might be around folks supplementing their physique, right? If you have more information than I do about performance enhancing drugs or rumors involving either fighter, Golovkin or Canelo, tell us about it in the comment section of this video. But understand, I feel Canelo feels betrayed, right? Let's face it too. Golovkin feels betrayed. Golovkin was with Abel Sanchez. They were at Big Bear. They invited Canelo over. Canelo was in the ring. Golovkin, of course, look up his past. Folks, this is one of the great middleweights in history. Right? We were all astonished. 
that Danny Jacobs was able to go the distance against Triple G. And Jacobs barely makes it. Because Triple G before that was knocking everyone out. So here we have the fight where Canelo more skilled, but let's throw out some hard language here. More skilled, but does Canelo trust his back foot enough to actually use it against Golovkin? Folks, the second fight, he's front foot dominant, isn't he? Right, front foot dominant. It's clear, by the way, <laughs> that Canelo for the second fight watched that Kasim Uba fight from years ago in Golovkin's past. Right, so Canelo is going to try to crash the pocket. Now, from the Golovkin side, let's recognize that he's 40, but power is the last to go. Understand, too, I thought Golovkin won the rematch. Golovkin thinks he won the rematch. Then you had something weird happen. You had the, hey, I'm going to fight Golovkin again, but I have other business with other fighters. As if Khaled Plant was as known as Triple G. As if, let's name a bigger name, Billy Joe Saunders, was as known as Triple G. Right? As if Rocky Fielding was as known as Triple G. Seemed to me that Canelo was waiting for a tough opponent to get old. Right? Years passed, didn't it? Would you have rather seen Canelo fight Kovalev? That was a big fight, Kovalev, 175-pound champion, as opposed to the third Triple G fight? Didn't you get the feeling that Canelo, again, was waiting for Triple G to get old? So now you have bad blood, right? Triple G feels Canelo is juiced up. Canelo feels Triple G is bitter and is trying to overplay a positive clenbuterol, uh, weight cutting, positive test, and you can get clenbuterol from tainted meat, if you believe that story, into painting Canelo as some kind of uh, boxing cheat. When Canelo really has been getting by with power, he's one of the hardest punchers in the sport pound for pound, as is Golovkin, right? And skills. Canelo is not the same fighter who fought Floyd Mayweather, right? Canelo is much more skilled now. Right? Canelo's so scary in the pocket, but think about it. Kovalev, knockout puncher, was backing away from the pocket against Canelo. And Canelo wasn't even a light heavyweight. This would be like watching Arthur Perturbiev against Canelo suddenly going, you know, hey, I'm backing away. Hey, this this 168 or hey, I'm not I'm not having it. Right? So just understand, third fights tend to be much more violent than the first two, right? I want people to think back on Bo Holifield, right? First fight, Riddick Bo wins. Second fight, that's the Fan Man fight. I thought Bo looked like he was about to win that fight. Fan Man shows up, Evander Holifield then is rejuvenated. Holifield wins the second fight. Third fight, Riddick Bo, better fighter than we remember. Stops Evander Holifield. That fight does not go the distance. Let's talk about more bad blood. Ali Fraser, first fight, let's stop kidding ourselves. Fraser dominates that fight. The second fight is tainted. Ali's allowed to push down on the back of Fraser's head, right? You have to stop Fraser from coming inside and throwing punches. The tactic used by Ali in that second fight was illegal. The judges awarded the fight to Ali. The third fight, the thriller in Manila, first off, let me just say, it's a miracle both guys are still standing at the start of the 14th round. Right? That's a miracle. That fight is brutal. Right? That fight ends when Eddie Futch, Fraser's trainer, Hall of Fame trainer, has seen enough. 
because his guy, he knows, went into the fight blind in one eye, and Ali blew up the other eye. Fraser could not see the punches. Fraser is throwing punches at shadows. Well, now we get Triple G Canelo. Right? I'll be blunt. Half of the play for me is simply an odds play. If I saw a plus 300 on either of these fighters, I'd be thinking to myself, okay, well, I know that's, that's part of the bet. Right? You're getting a greater than a plus 300 on the Golovkin side. That's part of the bet. The other part is the 10 and a half rounds. Very high over-under. Very high over-under. And they're giving you, believe it or not, better than a plus 150 on the under. Now, I know many people in the public go by what they've seen. First fight went the distance. Who cares who won? If you're an over-under better, you're thinking first fight went the distance. Second fight went the distance. What do I have to think about? Right? Well, you need to think about the fact that both of these guys have been living in each other's head since that second fight. You need to think about the fact that Canelo now has ballooned up. An argument can be made that Canelo's the bigger man. I don't care about height. Look at the size of their necks. Canelo's a bigger dude. Not only that, just mentally. Canelo's been fighting champions. Right, folks? I know there are some in the sport who have fought some great fighters over the years. But my goodness, think about Canelo's last few fights. Who's the softest guy Canelo has fought who did not have a title? Right, folks, Canelo's been fighting only title holders. Has anyone figured that out? Right, Canelo, Canelo's fighting the cream of the crop. So he's going to look at Golovkin as a guy he beat already. Canelo believes he won the second fight. A guy who he knows he can be on his front foot against. Right? I think Canelo's even more aggressive this fight. Let me say this. Although Canelo has a back foot, he's had almost too much success on his front foot, and he's coming off a loss. Right? Bevo was just too fluid for him. Bevo, dare I say, made Canelo look predictable. Right? Canelo, when he was younger, you weren't sure. Front foot, back foot. Right? What's he going to do? Now you look at Canelo fights, there's a pattern. He's slowly coming forward, isn't he? He's trying to either get you in the pocket or get you on your back foot, isn't he? He's trying to set you up. He's stalking you. He's trying to set you up for that beautiful left hook he throws. That'll stun you and wipe you out. That's who Canelo is. There are going to be few surprises in this fight. Now, unlike Canelo, I think Rayota Murata is a big-time puncher. I think Triple G, until now, has taken Canelo's punch and has taken the punches of other big punchers. Right? Triple G has never relied on hand speed. Never, ever. He's a guy who relies on power. With both hands, that's hard to block. Right? I think Triple G is going to insist that the guys be an arm's length apart at least. Triple G is going to be the guy who wants space. If Canelo comes forward, Triple G knows how to be outside with the cushion. I think this is a dangerous fight for both men. The hedge I like on this fight.
is the under 10 and a half rounds, right? You're getting that at between a plus 150 and a plus 180. Full admission, these under bets have blown up on me of late, right? Andy Ruiz knocks down Luis Ortiz twice. Luis Ortiz insisted on not only getting off the canvas, but finishing the fight stronger than Andy Ruiz. Ruiz won the 12th round, right? Excuse me, Ortiz won the 12th round. Here, I'm expecting someone to get knocked down. I'm expecting someone to get stopped. I need for it to happen before the halfway point of the 11th round. You're getting a full 10 and half of the 11th. You're also getting Golovkin from the start of the fight to the announcement of the decision. If he wins the decision, you win on that half of the bet. But I need for you to understand the risk involved. If Canelo, who is a judge's favorite, let's just be blunt. I don't know how else you could argue that he wins the first four rounds of the Bevo fight. I thought that was ridiculous scoring. Right? Canelo's a judge's favorite. If Canelo is able to make it to the second half of the 11th round, as he did the first fight, as he did the second fight, right? Keep in mind, Canelo has never been stopped. Has never been stopped. His only two losses are Floyd Mayweather and Bevel, right? If Canelo, who himself has a chin, makes it to the second half of the 11th round and then goes on to win the fight, you lose it all. Right? If he makes it to the second half of the 11th round, but he loses the fight, hey, I'm good. I have the Golovkin side at plus 350. Right? But if Canelo wins by decision or by late stoppage, right, 12th round stoppage, stoppage in the second half of the 11th round, you lose it all. That's the bet I like. Golovkin simply to win, hedged with the under 10 and a half rounds, right? Both of both sides of the bet, you're getting better than a plus 150. Canelo has given some interviews where he says, look, I want a stoppage. That does not sound like a guy who plans to be on his back foot. Think of the Canelo who fought. Billy Joe Saunders, he's coming forward. Right, Caleb Plant, he's coming forward. Callum Smith, he's coming forward. Kovalev, he's coming forward. Rocky Fielding, he's coming forward. Right, while we saw Canelo with a back foot against Cotto, for example, that hasn't been who he has been recently. Against Bevel, he's coming forward. Right, understand too, there's a fight that I personally think, this is a fight I think Golovkin lost. <laughs> the Derevi and Chenko fight. I know <laughs> YouTube Nation disagrees with me, fair enough. But in that fight, Derevi and Chenko gets low, goes after Golovkin's body. Golovkin had a problem with the Revianchenko getting low, going after his body, just like he had a problem with Canelo, getting low, going after his body in the second fight. I thought he beat Canelo in that second fight. I did think he lost to the Revianchenko. Canelo is going to go after Golovkin. He's going to, in my opinion, try to crash the pocket. He's going to be the pursuer against Golovkin. Right? Golovkin's trainer, Jonathan Banks, gave an interview where he pointed out that there are going to be some different things in this fight. Well, understand, Golovkin knows he wants a cushion and he wants to throw power shots on Canelo. Right? Golovkin already is a master at hitting you on the top of the head. Right? Forehead, a little bit higher than that. 
I think both guys are going to be swinging for the fences. Let me say this too. If you're an older fighter, let's say you're in your 40s, and your game has slipped a little bit, the people around you know it because they've watched your sparring sessions. In figuring out the strategy to use for this fight, they've looked at your old films. Golovkin, hell of a fighter. What I've found is when an older guy is fighting a guy and just doesn't have it, think Oscar De La Hoya against Manny Pacquiao, right? When that older guy is just a step too slow and can't quite finish, rather than allow their fighter to get knocked out in the ring, a corner will pull the plug between rounds, right? They're watching their fighter. The fighter doesn't look that good. The fighter is getting hammered. Think David Lemieux against David Benavides, right? Where Lemieux's corner is talking to him, Lemieux's corner was prepared to end that fight, right? Because they didn't want their fighter getting embarrassed. Now, unfortunately, Lemieux did get knocked down and roughed up. But just think about it. If Triple G, who has not been fighting anything close to the sustained level of opposition that Canelo's been fighting, if Triple G is in over his head, if Canelo starts working over Triple G's body and starts landing really big shots against Triple G, I believe the proud fighter's corner is not going to allow their guy to get embarrassed. The reason that's important for us is if the corner pulls the plug, hey, that counts toward the under if it happens before the midway point of the 11th round. Right, so, to sum up, I'm taking Triple G simply to win. I'm hedging the play with the under 10 and a half rounds. With a fight of this magnitude, with guys who are familiar with each other, literally fighting for history, because understand, if Triple G wins this fight, history is going to be rewritten. We're going to say the first fight was a draw, but we all know Triple G got ripped off. Canelo did better in the second fight. Did he do enough to win? You're going to get an argument at the pub. The third fight, we'll say, well, Triple G, even after waiting for years, went up to 168 and settled the score. Right? Then some luster is going to be brought back to the fact that Triple G was a dominant middleweight. I know this fight's not a middleweight. But people will, of course, over time, say, okay, well, this is the fitting ending. Triple G got revenge against the one guy who officially beat him. If Canelo beats Triple G, folks, that's it. Right? People are going to say Canelo won the second fight. Canelo now has won the third fight. What is there to discuss? Right? Riddick Bowe beat Evander Holyfield in that trilogy. Ali is remembered as winning the thriller in Manila. Right? Canelo would be considered the victor here. Right? In terms of styles, I believe you'll know Canelo's in trouble if he's on his back foot. Right? I believe you'll know Triple G's in trouble if Canelo is landing the type of body shots that he landed in the second fight and Triple G is unable to get Canelo away from his body. Right, I personally will be surprised if this fight makes it to the ninth round. We'll see what happens. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Looking at these odds, I'm sorry. When I see Canelo minus 500 against one of the great middleweight champions in history, a guy whose calling card is power, 
a guy who never relied on hand speed, so I'm not too worried about age, right? Ryota Murata got off to a great start against Triple G. The fire was still there. Triple G returns fire, gets the stoppage in the mid-rounds. Right? Nobody, not even at 168, deserves to be getting the odds that Canelo is getting in this fight. Right? I like Triple G to win straight up um, with the plus 350. I think I got plus 360. Hedged with the under 10 and a half rounds. Someone's going to have to explain to me how two blessed punchers are getting this high and over under in their rubber match. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.